coming up on the show, enrollment is on the decline at USM. University officials cite many factors as to why this is the case. Find out what President Joe Paul and others say at the top of the show. Plus, the Eagle's Nest Food Pantry is a valuable resource at USM. However, donations are needed to ensure it can still provide for the students, faculty, and staff that rely on it. SMTV News for Wednesday, April 5th, 2023 starts right now. From the Chuck Scarborough Television Studio on the campus of the University of Southern Mississippi, this is SMTV News, news you can use. Hello, USM. I'm Garrett Grove. Thank you for tuning in to SMTV. Undergraduate enrollment at USM has been declining for years. SMT reporter Simeon Gates tells us how USM's administration is rising up to the challenge. A number of factors have caused enrollment at Southern Miss to drop in recent years. SM2 caught up with Dr. Randall Langston and Dr. Joe Paul for more information. Since 2010, less students have been enrolling in college nationally. This is due primarily to three factors, declining birth rates, the rising cost of college, and the COVID-19 pandemic. This trend is reflected in USM's enrollment numbers, which have been getting steadily lower since 2010. As of fall 2022, there are 13,526 total undergraduates, with the vast majority being in Hattiesburg. Less students means less funding from the state, which could lead to an increase in tuition to cover for losses. It also negatively impacts student life on campus. Since starting at USM, University President Joe Paul has made boosting enrollment his top priority. Uh, we've got to be more creative and create new strategies uh, to be able to counter that and to grow our enrollment. The University of Southern Mississippi is just too fine a place for somebody not to choose to, to come to school here. Southern Miss's administration has implemented several programs to increase the student body. For example, they are working directly with community colleges to create a pathway for transfer students. And last semester, USM President Dr. Joe Paul tooled high schools and community colleges across the state to spread the word about Southern Miss. Despite the odds, Dr. Randall Langston, the Senior Associate Vice President for Enrollment Management, was confident the school could turn things around. We feel pretty good about uh, weathering some challenging times in, in, in our country's history, but uh, we're, doing, we're doing pretty well. It's a team effort here. We, we're all working together here as a, as a university to recruit and re retain uh, students. Simeon Gates, SMT News. Many of the issues at the Eagle's Nest Food Pantry still exist since our story last October. Increased inflation and price gouging still affect donations. And, of course, the need for food, school cleaning supplies, and more has not gone away. SM2 reporter Maya Evans has more on this story. The Eagle's Nest Food Pantry is one of the given places at the university. Students and others are in need can come and get goods. Food Pantry is um, an organization on campus that helps students like international students and anybody just come here and get food and stuff whenever they need and people can um, donate and then get community service hours. Students and staff are welcome anytime to come to the Eagle Nest to get food or any other item that's provided in the pantry. Organizations on campus and other outside groups donate monthly to the pantry. Dr. Serena Cantrell shares more. Donations from student organizations on campus, but we also receive donations from off-campus entities. We work from churches around town, but we survive off of donations. We do not have a budget of any kind, and so donations are how we keep the pantry open. Volunteers are welcome to work or bring goods to the pantry at any time. They are open on Wednesday from 10 to 2 p.m. and Friday from 1 to 4 p.m. A Pakistani student organization hosted a Ramadan iftar dinner on campus. 
many people were able to pray and break their fast as part of Ramadan, a holy obligation within Islam. Well over 100 people from USM and the Hattiesburg community showed up to the event within the R.C. Cook Student Union Monday night. Not only did it serve as a way to highlight the student organization, but it also served as a way to highlight the religion we follow on campus. Ramadan will end two weeks from Thursday, or April 20th. Hubfest is a celebration of all things art, music, food, and fun here in the city of Hattiesburg. It was co-presented by the city of Hattiesburg, the Forest County Board of Supervisors, and the Area Development Partnership. The annual event was held in downtown Hattiesburg and featured four live music stages. Over 250 arts, crafts, and food vendors were there. Of course, there was a large children's area for the kiddos to have fun as well. Hubfest brought over 30,000 attendees to the Hub City downtown area. On Friday, the University Police Department arrested a man and detained a student in front of the library. Stephen Green of North Carolina was charged with trespassing, disorderly conduct, resisting arrest, and two counts of felony simple assault on a police officer. Based on the video obtained by an eyewitness, a USM soccer team player was temporarily detained. It was sophomore Patricia Gasparovichova. As of now, no charges have been filed against her. Southern Miss Athletics told SM2 that they are aware of the situation and are monitoring it alongside UPD. Be sure to go to our website, sm2media.com, for the latest updates and more on the story. We still have several stories left in the show. Be sure to stay tuned for the latest news and sports affecting Hattiesburg. For news, weather, sports, and more, follow Southern Miss Student Media on all of our social media platforms, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. Welcome to the University of Southern Mississippi Writing Center. We are located in Cook Library, past the main doors and to the right. The Writing Center is open to all students at USM including undergraduate students, graduate students, professional students, and dual enrolled students. The Writing Center can help with all stages of the writing process, including brainstorming, drafting, revising, and polishing. We work with many forms of traditional writing, including essays, reports, labs, personal statements, theses, dissertations, and articles. We also work with multimedia communication, including slide presentations, websites, videos, social media, and more. And we work with professional documents such as resumes, cover letters, CVs, and personal statements. At the Writing Center, we aim to help you develop skills and build on your strengths as a writer and communicator. To set up an appointment, go to usm.mywconline.com. Enter your student ID and password in the provided box and search the scheduler. Click on the day and time you would like to make an appointment. Please be sure to verify if you would prefer an in-person appointment or an online appointment. We also take appointments by phone or in person. For appointments by phone or for any questions, please call the front desk at 601-266-4821. We hope to see you soon. The world is changing, and we are changing with it as our students create, inspire, and inform. Beginning this fall, the School of Media and Communication will take its Public Relations Master's degree fully online. That means students anywhere in Mississippi or around the world can get their advanced PR degree from the University of Southern Mississippi. Check us out as our students find new ways to create, inspire, and inform.
Biden stood in front of the wreckage as he offered his condolences to those affected and promised to help rebuild the community. He was joined by Governor Tate Reeves and Congressman Benny Thompson, who gave similar statements. The following Sunday, Biden approved disaster relief for the Magnolia State. On Tuesday, former President Donald Trump was charged with 34 felony counts of falsifying business records. Prosecutors claim these instances were part of a conspiracy to cover up alleged extramarital affairs with two women to avoid jeopardizing Trump's campaign in the 2016 election. This is the first time in American history a former president has been criminally indicted and charged with a felony. As of now, Trump is still pleading not guilty to the charges. Later that day, the former president gave a speech at his Florida mansion in Mar-a-Lago, where he insisted these charges were nothing more than a political, quote, witch hunt, and made claims insinuating the corruption of the U.S. government. Trump's next court date in the case is set for December. NATO Secretary General Hans Stoltenberg announced Monday that Finland would be formally joining the North Atlantic Treaty Organization. This decision finalizes a process that began last May, where Finland ended its long-standing history of military non-alignment after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In response, Russia said it will bolster defenses along the Finland border and threaten to increase the number of troops standing guard. Now we're going to go ahead and kick it over to Amari Anderson for the SMTV Sports Recap. SMTV Sports Recap with Amari Anderson. Southern Miss Athletics has been electric these past two weeks, but I'm here to fill you in on everything you've missed. Men's basketball is pretty quiet working in the offseason, but some congratulations are still in order as Austin Crowley was selected as a Lou Henson All-American. Swinging into baseball, the Eagles are 17-10 and 5-4 and 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 in conference play. The Eagles went 2-1 and one in the three-game series this past weekend versus Toy. The Eagles definitely brought out their bats as they had a total of 24 hits over the series. On Tuesday night, the Eagles had a home game versus Southeastern Louisiana where they won 10-6. You can catch the men back in action on Thursday, April 6th in Norfolk, Virginia at 5 p.m. as they take on an Old Dominion for a three-game conference face-off. On the softball side, the Lady Eagles are 16-15 after a tough series versus Torrey where they, took a three, where they took three losses, but on Tuesday, the ladies got a win 8-1 over Nicholas. You can be sure to catch the ladies back in action on Thursday at Texas State as they start their three-game conference series. Running into track and field, the Eagles hosted the Southern Miss Invitational. Southern Miss track and field claimed 12 events and seven other Golden Eagles recorded top three finishes. The Golden Eagles also found success in the women's 400-meter dash, sweeping the event with Trinity Benson coming in first, Savia Varnell taking second, and Trinity Flagger coming in third. You can be sure to catch the Eagles on April 8th in Baton Rouge, Louisiana to compete in the Joe May Invitational. And lastly, the moment you've all been waiting for, this week's Sports Street Player of the Week goes to Slade Wilkes. You better take a step back when Slade is up to the bat because Wilkes had a total of four hits, eight RBIs, and three home runs in the series versus Troy. This has been Omari Anderson with your Sports Recap. Back to you. Thank you so much, Amari. Now coming up next is your community calendar with Stephanie Smith. Be sure to write down these important dates on your calendar. And on this week's Southern Miss Today, we have a very interesting topic for you. Don't go anywhere. 
The world is changing, and we are changing with it as our students create, inspire, and inform. Beginning this fall, the School of Media and Communication will launch its strategic communication program that incorporates public relations, advertising, media sales, and organizational communication. Check us out as our students find new ways to create, inspire, and inform. Hey Mississippi, we are so excited to announce the launch of the new MEMA app. You can customize weather alerts, get preparedness tips, report damage, and so much more. You can download it today for free at the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store. We hope you enjoy it, and of course, stay safe, Mississippi. If you're watching this with your friends, you'll probably make a joke. Because you know what you feel on the inside isn't what you want people to know. If you have to pretend to be happy, find someone you trust and tell them. If you get mad at things and you don't know why, or have thoughts about hurting yourself, find someone you trust and tell them. You are never alone when you share. Seriously, people care about you. It's okay to not understand what you're feeling. And it's easy to think that you're all alone. But you don't have to be. You're never alone when you share. Don't be ashamed to tell someone you trust what you're feeling. You're not alone. You are not alone. Find someone you trust and tell them. Tell a parent. Tell a teacher. Tell a brother or sister. Or just tell a friend. You haven't done anything wrong. Talk to someone. Talk to someone. It's how things get better. Hello everyone, I am Stephanie Smith and welcome to the Southern Miss Community Calendar. The Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporating is hosting Alpha Palooza. They will have a tailgate on Thursday, April 6th at 3 p.m. at the district. The Men of Excellence will have an operation to help Rolling Fork, Mississippi. Donations can be accepted in the IME space and tabling from March 29th to April 12th. Items such as non-perishable foods, Beverages, toiletries, hygiene products, clothing, and blankets are acceptable. The nation's partner with the French Club will have French Hour on April 13th from 3 to 4 p.m. The event will take place in the International Center, room 212. The USM Wesley Foundation will have a crawfish boil on April 18th at 6.30 p.m. The event will take place in the Wesley Foundation Center on campus. SMAC will have a silent party Smack edition on April 12th from 7 to 9 p.m. The event will take place in the RC Cook Union, Union Room G. Smack will also have a crawfish fest on April 28th from 4 to 7 p.m. at Spirit Park. That is all for today, Golden Eagles. I am Stephanie Smith, and this has been your Southern Miss Community Calendar. out when you guys do go to the Canary Islands or go to support you in some way like yeah. is there any type of like yeah we have the I forget what you call it now I should know this but with the foundation the Eagle grant or okay. fund thing the, uh, the, like the GoFundMe kind of thing right. but through USM with the foundation so if you call the foundation and say we would like to support the percussion ensemble right. they will know where to stick that money and, and we would we would greatly appreciate it right and then and then we have the next weekend, we have Andy Norell coming. He's going to be here for Ooh. a whole week. You, you've heard of Andy Norell. I tell him, somebody has asked me, who's Andy Norell? I said, do you know anybody who has tunes in the real book? I mean, anybody personally? And everyone goes, no. Well, he does. Wow. I mean, he's, he's a living jazz legend, steel pan, most recorded pan player in the world. Yeah. And he's played with our, our ensemble like seven or, or eight times. And he loves coming here because the steel band here at Southern Miss is one of the best in the country. 
and uh, and he'll tell you that. And cool. so, and he's going to be here. We're doing a concert with him, April sixteenth at four o'clock. Okay. You do not want to miss April that. Twenty third. Oh, I'm sorry, 23rd. I got the wrong, I was looking at the wrong. Uh, we'll also be in Gulfport 23rd. at the Mississippi Gulf Coast Community College mm. campus on the 20th. Wow. Uh, that's going to be a really big show. They've got a brand new, really nice facility down there. Um, we're going to put on a huge show there. and I With we'll, Andy. With Andy. Yeah. With Andy. Wow, well that, that's a wonderful opportunity for all the Eagles out here and also anyone that's listening in to really hear and really be enveloped in like this music that you guys are providing and especially with the uh, steel pan and going all the way to the Canary Islands, it's just an amazing opportunity and mm -hmm. I'm sure that anyone a part of that uh, would really believe and agree with that. Uh, I was reading a little bit, I don't know if this is what you came here to talk on about, so correct me if I'm wrong, uh, but I heard that there's an event called Summer Drummin'. Summer Drummin'. We talk about Summer Drummin' too. We got a lot of stuff going on, don't we? Mm -hmm. um, we got all these concerts going on, uh, and, and then in this, the Summer Drumming is a drum camp that I started in 1992. Okay. Uh, actually started before I started working here. I, I knew I had the gig here, so I started a drum camp. And uh, we're doing summer drumming again, and it's we usually get around a hundred, you know, high school, college uh, drummers for yeah. marching percussion, um, and it's being run through the university band office. So if you go to USM bands or USM.edu bands, okay, and then you can register there. But that's uh, um, Murray Gussick is going to be our guest clinician. We Ooh. always have one guest clinician and then several alumni that help instruct at this camp. Right. But Murray Gussick lives in Portland. He used to teach the Santa Clara Vanguard Drum Bugle Corps. Mm -hmm. And I admire his teaching. Uh, when he was doing Santa Clara, I loved his writing and his yeah. teaching, so I wanted to get him here. Yeah. So, so he's coming. And then we have several outstanding alumni that are doing great things. Uh, that will be coming back, like Scott Jamison, who marches mm. with the old guard drum and fife corps in wow. Washington, D.C. We actually have four Southern Miss alums in the old guard in Washington, D.C., playing in the old guard drum and fife corps, which I consider the best drum line in the world. Right. And, uh, and then who else? Uh, Matt Little. Matt uh, Little will be here. From um, Pearl High School. He teaches at Pearl. Who else? Uh, Pearson Gilreath. Uh, is a freelance uh, teacher from Alabama, but he went to school here as well. And Mark Rivette, who uh, is a front ensemble instructor at the Blue Coats Drum and Bugle Corps. Currently. Wow. And a piano professor at. Uh, Mark, yeah. Mark. Where, where is he teaching? Hines. Hines. Yeah. Okay. Wow. And I understand that this event is open for all students, regardless of like level of talent, to be able to really provide and be able to learn from this experience. Is that yes, right? we have what we do um, when when they get here. It's for beginners to advanced right. players, and we put them in groups with their peers. Yeah. So we usually have about six or seven groups, with different levels. You know, so nobody's overwhelmed, but n and nobody's bored. Right. Everybody's challenged. <laughs> the whole time they're here. And it's it's intense. It's an intense week, you know. Right. We drum a lot, you know. Sometimes parents ask me, should should they bring their swimsuit? I go, why? <laughs> why why would you bring your swimsuit to a drum camp? We're not swimming. We're playing drums. Yeah. You know, thinking it's summer camp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah we work at this camp. <laughs> You know, something I just have to say is March Madness was definitely crazy this year for both the men's and women's teams. Yes. I enjoyed the women's a lot more than I did the men this year, though. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's just like there was just so much more controversy, particularly surrounding the women's team, especially as it relates to, you know, for instance, kind of the Angel Reese, you know, thing that you did <laughs> with Caitlin Clark, which, you know, seems pretty innocuous. It's just general trash talk that you would see among teammates. but. The internet did not see it that way. <laughs> but the real question is, who was I really going for? You know, it was really interesting for women in particular, um, you know, just because of SEC, I was going for LSU. But, you know, after, you know, the questionable technical foul that Caitlin Clark got, I was thinking, you know what, that's just wrong. <laughs> what well, about for you? I was going for LSU. 
But in other news, uh, did y'all get to enjoy MLB Day today? Yeah, you know, it was definitely a great experience. There's definitely a lot of employers that, you know, were ultimately able to, you know, just uh, kind of talk with us, things of that nature. And, you know, I saw a lot of you there, not only just kind of the people <laughs> on set, but also kind of everyone in the newsroom. And speaking of that, how'd you enjoy it, Stephanie? Um, it was pretty good. I, get, I, I talked to a lot of news directors and just, get, you know, get to, news, get to know the news directors and, you know, get my stuff in the door when it comes to working after graduation. Oh yeah, I, I completely understand that. I saw you talking with uh, WJTV's news director earlier. Yes, I'm trying to talk to everybody. I just oh, want to yeah. get my foot in the door oh, after yeah. graduation. Oh yeah, I completely get that fully. And you know, ultimately as well, something else that I thought was good too was kind of the award ceremony that we had on Saturday. Yes, it was so wonderful. I enjoyed myself, ate delicious food, got to see all the people dress nicely. It was so, so fun. That's good. Also, we want to give a congratulations to all of the SM2 members that received an award. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching SMTV. Be sure to subscribe to Southern Miss Student Media on YouTube and follow us on social media. You can find all these stories from today's show on our website at sm2media.com. You will be sure to find a new episode of the show every other Wednesday evening. Stay tuned for our next episode, which airs on April 19th. This has been Stephanie Smith, Garrett Grove, and Amari Anderson. And as always, Southern Miss to, to the, the top. top. the latest SMTV news episode? Find us and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Southern Miss Student Media. Welcome to the University of Southern Mississippi Writing Center. We are located in Cook Library, past the main doors and to the right. The Writing Center is open to all students at USM, including undergraduate students, graduate students, professional students, and dual enrolled students. The Writing Center can help with all stages of the writing process, including brainstorming, drafting, revising, and polishing. We work with many forms of traditional writing, including essays, reports, labs, personal statements, theses, dissertations, and articles. We also work with multimedia communication, including slide presentations, websites, videos, social media, and more and we work with professional documents such as resumes, cover letters, CVs, and personal statements. At the Writing Center, we aim to help you develop skills and build on your strengths as a writer and communicator. To set up an appointment, go to usm.mywconline.com. Enter your student ID and password in the provided box and search the scheduler. Click on the day and time you would like to make an appointment. Please be sure to verify if you would prefer an in-person appointment or an online appointment. We also take appointments by phone or in person. For appointments by phone or for any questions, please call the front desk at 601-266-4821. We hope to see you soon. The world is changing, and we are changing with it as our students create, inspire, and inform. Beginning this fall, the School of Media and Communication will launch its digital journalism program that incorporates broadcast journalism and multimedia journalism. Check us out as our students find new ways to create, inspire, and inform.